Anticipation is high as CARICOM's Golden Jubilee anniversary nears. And CARICOM mourns the passing of Barbadian statesman, the late Sir Lloyd Erskine Sandiford. Welcome to this week's broadcast of the CARICOM News Time. With the details, I am Toussaint in English Francis. Anticipation is high for the celebrations to mark the 50th anniversary of CARICOM. The milestone anniversary coincides with the 4th or 5th meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government. These events are set for Trinidad and Tobago from the 3rd to the 5th of July, with pre-activities the CARICOM 10K and 5K road races, slated for the 1st and 2nd of July. The opening ceremony of the 4th or 5th CARICOM Conference of Heads of Government takes place on the evening of July 3rd at the Hyatt Regency in Port of Spain. Outgoing Chair of CARICOM, the Honorable Philip Davis, Prime Minister of the Bahamas, incoming Chair, the Honorable Roosevelt Carrot, Prime Minister of Dominica, host Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley, and the Secretary General of CARICOM, Dr. Carla Barnett, will address the ceremony. It will be live streamed on CARICOM social media platforms and will also be broadcast on national television stations in the Caribbean. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres is expected in Trinidad and Tobago for a special interaction with CARICOM heads following the opening ceremony of the conference. Several activities starting with an official flag raising ceremony at the place of the signing of the Treaty of Chagaramas on the 4th of July will mark CARICOM's Golden Jubilee anniversary. A number of third state's partners are expected in Trinidad and Tobago to join in CARICOM's Golden Jubilee celebrations. Trinidad and Tobago's Minister of Foreign and CARICOM Affairs, Dr. Emery Brown, spoke about these highly anticipated events on Trinidad and Tobago's Now Morning Show. As we approach this golden anniversary of 50th birthday, as a community, it offers us the opportunity to bring the family back to its birthplace, to Trinidad and Tobago. I think the entire region has recognized that this is an event that mm. will never occur again. You only turn 50 once, and they've, they've all, uh, they're all coming out in, in strong numbers. Yeah. That's also reflected in the interest for special guests to also attend. And we have uh, strong delegations from a number of our uh, entities that are partners with CARICOM mm -hmm. and with Trinidad and Tobago, ranging, of course, China, CARICOM, the European Union, key international organizations and regional organizations, uh, the Andean Development Bank. Yeah. Um, and it's really a wide range. Koreans as well. Mm. We really are going to have uh, a who's who of international diplomacy and leadership right here in Trinidad and Tobago to celebrate with us yes. on this special occasion. Yeah. The CARICOM Single Market and Economy, CARICOM Agri-Food Systems Agenda and the CARICOM's preparation for the 28th Global Climate Change Summit are some of the agenda items heads will discuss at their 4th or 5th meeting in Trinidad and Tobago. CARICOM Secretary General Dr. Carla Barnett says CARICOM's longevity is the result of deep commitment to regional integration. This commitment has been nurtured decade after decade by the sturdy determination of successive governments and the people of the region. Dr. Barnett said in remarks she delivered on June 27th during Antigua and Barbuda's flag raising ceremony to mark CARICOM's 50th anniversary. As the theme selected for our 50th anniversary celebrations declares, we are 50 years strong with a solid foundation to build on. We will continue to forge a Caribbean community that is inclusive and resilient, a community that is a unified competitive force in the global arena where every citizen is secure, and a community that shares opportunities and economic, social, and cultural prosperity. As we celebrate this Golden Jubilee, we pay homage to our founders, to past and present administrations and staff of institutions and associate institutions of the community and of the CARICOM Secretariat, 
to the people of the region, both resident and in the diaspora, and to our international partners. We acknowledge with heartfelt appreciation your deeply rooted commitment to the ideals of integration and the concrete benefits that have accrued to the region because of your partnerships, advocacy, and hard work. In his address, the country's Prime Minister, the Honorable Gaston Brown, said CARICOM has resulted in significant benefits to all its member states. He called for more to be done for less developed countries like Antigua and Barbuda to maximize the benefits of regional integration. It is important for us to continue to strengthen our integration movement. I will be the first to say that it's not a perfect union. It's not a perfect movement. There are many challenges that must be addressed. We know, for example, that the LDCs have not benefited proportionally compared to the MDCs. But notwithstanding those challenges, I'm of the firm view that CARICOM has resulted in significant benefits for all of our nations. And we have seen this especially through functional cooperation. And when you look at CARICOM in the context of the global challenges facing our respective nations, we can all conclude that we will do better collectively than individually. Foreign ministers of CARICOM and Canada have agreed to continue working collaboratively to deepen cooperation on climate resilience, trade, inclusive governance, and multilateral engagement. This commitment is recorded in the communique issued after the 2023 CARICOM Canada Foreign Ministers Group meeting, held recently in Washington, D.C., on the margins of the 2023 OAS General Assembly. The foreign ministers discussed recent engagements between CARICOM heads of government and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. They welcomed the renewal of the non-reciprocal preferential trade agreement granted by Canada for goods from CARICOM member states. The CARICOM Secretariat has produced its first compendium of model knowledge, attitudes and practice tool for the region on social gender norms and violence against women and the girls. The CARICOM Secretariat's Gender and Development Program developed the tool in May 2023 in partnership with the United Nations Children's Fund under the Regional Spotlight Initiative Caribbean Program. So the CAP tool that's developed for the Gender and Development Program, it's around social gender norms and violence against women and girls. And it's a part of the Regional Spotlight Initiative Caribbean Program. So the CAP tools is essentially to measure people's perceptions, attitudes. It's actually knowledge, attitudes, and practices. It started out knowledge, attitudes, and behavior, but it's the same thing. So it's, it's a tool that can be used to monitor and evaluate, but it's a measuring tool. So you could actually sample a target population with whatever you need to know. Let's say you want to find out about women's unpaid care work and how people feel. If you want to find out, if you want to survey the LGBTQ population on their behavior, that can be done. So CAP tools actually started out in areas of family planning and migration and population, but it's evolved now and people have used it in education. A number of the social sciences, gender, and so this is properly placed where it is looking at social gender norms against violence, social gender norms and violence against women and girls. CARICOM joins the wider community in mourning the passing of Sir Lloyd Erskine Sandiford, former Prime Minister of Barbados. A statement by the CARICOM Secretariat following his passing on the 26th of June said Sir Lloyd's life was defined by selfless service to his country. Part of the statement reads, his contributions as a member of CARICOM's Conference of Heads of Government were characterized by passion and professionalism and helped to advance the community's high aspirations for deeper integration set out in the Granans Declaration and Work Program for the Integration Movement. Thank you for joining us for this broadcast of the CARICOM News Time. 
For more stories, you can visit the CARICOM news site at today.caricom.org or the CARICOM website at caricom.org. You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be safe and see you next time.